Hi, this is Karen Overton coming to you today again from the Quilt Rambler studio for another 15 minutes of Ramble and Sew with the Rambler, me. I have had a fantastic week and I really wasn't sure if I was going to uh, film today or not because I've been out of town for several days and so I'm a little bit behind in everything and, and then I've got a lot of things going on, but it was like, you know, why not? I am sewing, it's Sunday afternoon and I just wanted to share with you a few things that I've made this week. Um, like I said, I was out of town first part of the week, went to LaGrange and taught a wonderful group of ladies about the Studio 180 design tools. We specifically focused on the corner beam, the same little quilt that I did last week here in the um, Landlock Quilting Cruise event. I came home and decided I just needed to sew. I just, sometimes you just, I needed to hang things up, I needed to unpack, but I just needed to sew. And I want to show you, you've probably seen this on, on Facebook already, but isn't this darling? This is a little um, name badge pouch. Uh, it's by Patterns by Annie. It is a free download on her website. It has a little um, place right here when I go to festival. They always give you the name badges. It can go here. It's got a nice little zipper where I can put in that little hidden 20 and the charge card. And what I really like is I can put my cell phone here. Now my cell phone is filming right now so I can't show you how it fits. But I had another idea. Um, we have elderly parents and they're probably, if they watch this, they know they're gonna expect one now. But isn't this gonna be something neat that uh, a senior could wear um, and keep their phone on them? Because how many times has something happened and you don't know where your phone is? It's either ringing and you can't get to it fast enough or if there were an emergency, you know, you would need to get to this. So this was a fun little thing that I did in an afternoon. And like I said, it's a Patterns by Annie. And I gave a link in my blog to where you could get that. Um, also, I've been playing around with this beautiful Hunter Star. And actually, as much as I'd like to say, this was just for fun. This is really a future class that I'm teaching uh, next month in my techniques and tool TNT with the Quilt Rambler event. And what I like about it was it's bright colors. Um, you can see my, my, my back door, my kitchen is yellow, turquoise. I love color, I love island things. And island boutiques and I just really get along fabulous. I thought if I could take just a smidgen and not actually teach you this project, but maybe walk you through some of the steps using the Deb Tucker Hunter Star tool. She has two different ones. There's the petite one that this pattern calls for, and then there's a larger one. It varies in size from five and a half inches to eight and a half, and the larger one goes to a 10 and a half square, which I like because my favorite thing to do is use two and a half inch strips or 10 inch stacks. So it makes pre-cuts make my life really easy. But this particular pattern is one of Deb's patterns and it's the Hunter Star Table Runner. And like I said, I'm teaching it in a few weeks. And so I had some extra fabric that I did a few step outs for my class that I thought I'd take a moment and show you how I did that. Now in the real world, this would be a long strip. Okay, you're gonna cut this star strip based on the pattern and what it tells you to. And then you've got these little trapezoids that are going on. This is that part of the Hunter Star block here. Now again, but depending on which tool you're using, which size trapezoids you cut, and it's gonna tell you how to do that. But kind of like the Lemoyne Star, we have to offset it a little bit to make our stars. And it tells you to fold down a certain amount of inches. I have found that if I'll just fold down my fabric, when I get started, then I know I've got enough room for later when I trim. Now, one thing that I do different uh, is I press my seams open. Now, I've had a lot of gals tell me they have a hard time with the Hunter Star, even with um, Deb's techniques, and I would venture to say it probably has to do with your pressing because your quarter inch seam makes a big difference on how accurate you are in your sewing. Your cutting makes a difference, but your pressing does too. I like to use a pressing stick, and this is by uh, the Strip Stick Company, uh, or stripstick.com. I like it because it's made in Texas. I'm all about Texas. But when I'm pressing, I'm actually, I don't know if you can see this or not, I only have one camera 
uh, location at this time. But I will finger press it open first and then I will press it open. Then I will also take it to you know my station, of course, I'm on the ironing station, and I'll shoot it with a little bit of spray starch. Uh, Best Press is wonderful, Flatter is great, so is the magic sizing that you get at the department stores. I would urge that if you're going on a retreat, this is one of my helpful hints, is don't bring the aerosol spray unless you're going to spray it outside because sometimes your fellow uh, quilters may have an allergy problem or a respiratory problem. And for that same token, when I travel, I bring the unscented uh, for that very reason, just to be, you know, consideration for others. So anyway, I would have made a long strip with all these little babies and then it tells you to cut them. And you're going to cut them at an angle. Um, I think it was this one. Anyway, you're going to follow along and you just cut one side, you cut them apart, and then you're going to sew them to the next one. So here they are cut apart. Oh, see if I can hold it. Cut it apart and I'm sewing the other side. Okay, so here's the little one from a while ago, and he's a little wrangly. Then I'm going to press him open, and it's going to look like this. And I do need to press open and be very careful when I lay it on my cutting station to follow that 45 degree angle of cutting that star, or you're going to have problems later. You're going to end up with something that looks like this. It's a little bit, as I like to say, a little bit rough around the edges. You're going to then trim this down. Again, depending on which star you're using, if it's the petite star or the uh, larger ruler, it's going to tell you the exact size to trim this. Obviously, you're trimming from this side to get rid of this, but I would dare say if you will turn it around and again trim it this side to make sure this one was one and three quarters. And even though it looks straight when I laid it back on my cutting station, sometimes this little star can kind of go a little cattywampus. And that's going to give you problems later if you're having trouble with your trim down. So when you're trimming your trapezoid, trim it from both sides, okay? Let's move this out of the way. And then you're going to sew it to your half triangle, okay? Now, lining things up is equally as important because I'm putting the short side of the trapezoid up against my triangle. And can you see this here? I've got little dog ears sticking out. If these are not positioned correctly, it's going to affect your trimming down later, okay? Again, I'm going to use my pressing stick, and I'll show you how I finger press. I hope you can see this. Uh, but I'm actually gonna finger press it first. That does two things. That helps me smooth it out and go ahead and start that press, but it also keeps me from burning my nails. Uh, with my with my iron as I go down and then if I have a longer stick which I do this comes as a 45 I can line up a bunch and I can just zoop, 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 go right down there and press those little babies open then of course you're going to sew them together to have your hunter star now I was out of this fabric actually I'm not out of it I'm kind of like holding on to it um, if I cut it up, I won't have it anymore. And I have about 45 inches left of this, and I really like this, this background fabric, so I didn't want to cut it just for my example. So follow the instructions on the tool, you'll lay it down and you'll trim it up. So, it's time to sew, 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 sew. So what I did is, um, because my long arm is occupied right now and I wasn't sure that I could uh, film and talk over it, I've decided to use Biani Soft and Stable for, um, instead of batting, in my table runner and um, I went ahead and, and did some stabilizing because I wasn't sure how long it would take me to quilt and to go around things but I really like the soft and stable because it's going to give a nice uh, firmness to my um, to my table runner so let's go ahead and get that started because I'm supposed to be rambling and sewing but I thought it was kind of fun to do that little bit of a uh, a tutorial because uh, quite frankly that's something that I'm wanting to do uh, as I grow with my videology videology well <laughs> as I grow with my my uh, lack of camera skills that's the good thing there's always room to go up okay when you start at the bottom you could it's only going up from here so I would love to be able to do some tutorials uh, with you where I'm actually doing more step outs and not just a brief overview. Let's see if I can up oh, needle down 
This guy is kind of long. He's like 58 inches. And I'm going to try real hard not to hit um, the camera mic so that it doesn't make goofy noises. But I am just stitching in the ditch. Um, here's my disclaimer about stitching in the ditch. On my actual Hunter Star, since I pressed it open, I don't stitch in the ditch. Because if I did, I would just be stitching over thread and that would weaken my seam. But when I put on my borders, I always press out so that I have a stitch because I feel like if I can stitch actually in the ditch around a border, um, that that helps define that border and make sure, uh, makes your quilt top pop. I do that also on the long arm is to try to take turns uh, the way that I press things. Now, as a former long arm quilter for hire, I have to tell you, if you're sending your quilts out to your long arm quilter, really pay attention to how you press. There, if, if you don't press all the same direction, she has no ditch, she or he, has no ditch to stitch in, and it does make it very difficult to stay straight. It's also much, much easier to stitch in the ditch on a domestic sewing machine than it is a long arm. Ask me how I know, okay? I'm actually pushing the fabric, the quilt sandwich, through my um, sewing machine, or my domestic as I like to call it. Now, if I had a walking foot, it would probably be better, but I rarely, rarely, rarely quilt on my domestic only when I'm doing something with soft and stable and I'm making uh, a pattern by Annie or, or something like that, or table runners or placemats, um, because I'm much more comfortable behind a long arm. But on a long arm, you're driving that big machine. Um, mine actually weighs like 67 pounds, but I've been quilting with it for um, 15 years, okay? So that's a lot of weight to push around and I'm not getting any younger. So I, I really urge you to be nice to your long arm quilter and do whatever you can do to make things flat for her. Um, you don't want uh, a bunch of seams all coming in one place. When you're, when you're quilting with, um, when you're making a star unit or something where a lot of, of seams come together, open those up even if even if op pressing open is so against your your religion still do it because it will lay flat and it will be much much easier to quilt okay now this guy's got to turn and go this way and that way i'm thinking i i'm, I'm thinking i want to to bind it in this yellow um, to make it pop my kitchen has a yellow subway tile so uh, my builder kind of <laughs> It was stretching him a bit, all the color that I put in my house, but uh, I like it, and I think I want him over later. Um, anyway, this is just a short little um, fun day of going through and showing you what I've been doing this week. I have a class tomorrow. I'm teaching um, the Shaded Nine Patch, and this is kind of a takeoff. I, the shop has my placemat, so I can't show you. They are on social media. But the shaded nine patch is this little square without, if that was all yellow, of course it would be the nine patches and it's cut in half. Well, there's a technique sheet for, for that from Studio 180 Design. This actually uh, is a blockbuster. She showed us how to make the shaded nine patch and then pop the corner. And I had to have X's and O's, which is almost Valentine's Day. So I guess this works out for that, doesn't it? But anyway, I'm going to be teaching that class tomorrow at the local quilt shop. And so here in a few minutes, I'm just going to have to call this quilt done because I need to finish uh, my handouts for class. Um, it's just kind of funny because I, I, sometimes I don't know when to say when. And I, I, I have all these fabulous ideas and I get things going, I get things started, and I'm just ready to ramble and roll. Um, then I realize, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this. Oh, I forgot, I've got to do that. I'm not really that scattered brained. I just have way so many ideas that there's just not enough hours in the day to get it all done. So I'm not sure about uh, the weekly ramble and sew. In fact, I really wasn't gonna do it today. 
um, just because it takes time to, you know, to put the credits at the beginning at the end. I still don't know how to edit, so y'all going to put up with that for a little while longer. But if you'll stick with me, um, like I said, I'm hoping to only go up from here, and a rambler does need an audience, so I appreciate. Oh, this is kind of hard. I got this is a lot to push through. Those of you that can quill from a domestic, I am just in awe. You may not can see this. Maybe you can see it on this one. Okay. When I said something about I can't stitch in the ditch, I did go around a quarter inch on the inside, okay? And I'm going to go around a quarter inch in the yellow and this also. This is actually how my mama used to hand quilt. Uh, they always would quilt a quarter inch away from their seam. Why? I don't know. But that's what they did. And so I guess in a way, I'm just thinking about mama today and uh, this is how I want to finish this little quilt off. So I think this will be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to sharing um, the class uh, tomorrow with the Shaded Nine Patch and uh, hopefully everybody will go home with some pretty um, uh, placemats or at least the knowledge to finish those placemats at home. And then maybe they'll come back the following month and help me out um, with uh, doing the Hunter Star together. Again, this is a pattern by Studio 180 Design. And that's my cue. It's been 15 minutes of fun and ramble and sewing together. I wanted to try to keep this to 15 minutes this time. I hope you can hear me over my clock. But don't you just love that clock? I do, I do. Little Lion Judah says hello. Our little secret bundle is still hanging around. And hopefully um, this next week I'll actually get to start using some of my secret, um, what do I call it? This, the Signature Line Fall Market 2020. So I'm really eager to cut into that and get sewing in that direction. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to finish this little guy up before I get started on my uh, class handout. And thank you for once again uh, joining me here in the Quilt Rambler studio. I hope you found some of the tips today useful as you try to make a hunter star uh, yourself. Deb has fabulous tutorials on her YouTube that I strongly urge you to watch. So thanks for joining me again. This is Karen Overton, the Quilt Rambler. See you next time.